All right. that they can move forward with that and really build off of that. But the offense just never was able to catch up, and that was what was the biggest, I think, question to me. It's like, how, how, did, how did that happen? So I think we need to address the, where we went wrong. You have too many good players. You got Devontae, you have Josh Jacobs, you've got Jacoby, who was fantastic. I can go on and on and on. It's just like, it's gotta click at some point, right? It's gonna, it's gonna click, and it just never did. I think with fans, they were still a little bit cautiously optimistic. Like, obviously, wins, cure all ills, you know, it's the same. But both of those games were very close wins. You know, they weren't particularly convincing. And I think that's something that Devontae Adams said around that time. We need to have some type of convincing victories. That, that way we can really hold on to that feeling, not the feeling of just squeezing out. You got to start changing the way it looks. And this one is all done here in Chicago. Embarrassment. It's a embarrassment. the frustration that comes with playing the way that the Raiders have all season on offense. It was it was not good and that's when the black cloud I felt like really started to build over the fan base, over the organization. Well, I think the, the fan base was fed up at that point. And I think some people in the building were fed up and I think some people on the team were fed up after this after the Detroit loss. Do you have any ideas or anything you think that could spark the offense going forward? Mm -hmm. I don't know, that ain't my job. It's wild, man. It's, <laughs> it's wild how everything shook out. I'm literally doing my radio show on ESPN, right? We're going into the very last hour of the show. We're about to start off talking about something completely not, not football related, not Raiders related for sure, right? The open is rolling. Like I'm about to start talking about something completely different. I look down and see a tweet from Schefter and an email from the Raiders at the same time. And I'm supposed to be talking and I'm looking at my phone like, uh, I think we need to switch our conversation real quick. Raiders have fired head coach Josh McDaniels and general manager Dave Ziggler. Huge news for the Raiders overnight. So one in the morning <laughs> Eastern is when everything went down in Vegas, I guess. What, what can you tell me about why Mark Davis made this move with his uh, front office and his coach? Antonio Pierce will be the interim head coach. Antonio Pierce's team now. Yeah. So I'm excited because I do think Antonio Pierce is a natural born leader. And it's a newfound energy. You are going to see a different Raiders team by the style of play mm. with Antonio Pierce. I'm ready to go and they absolutely can turn this thing around. What's the first thing I need to do? Um, and I was good to the players. I need to get that, that excitement and joy back into those into our hearts, man, into our blood, into the flow of how we walk through this building. We got nine games left, man. And we can write our own script. And the first thing I did when I walked in the team room, I gave everybody a blank sheet of paper. What are we gonna do with it? We can write it down. I don't care about nothing else. We started from scratch, blank sheet, front and back. Because they thought I was crazy. Man, this dude gave me a blank sheet. He forgot to. He really don't know what he's doing, you know? No, 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 no. We, 
going to write this book differently. So was, to me, it's just really just getting us together, being united. If you're not in, let's get them out. If you're in, let's tighten up. We can be difference makers in a lot of ways, right? A lot of ways, a lot of ways, a lot of ways. I just wanted this entire organization, man, to, to back one another and get behind what it's truly about, and that's, you know, Raider Nation, Raiders football. Yes, sir, gentlemen's handshake. Yes, sir. And I wanted to know that that's something I truly believed in. That's something that I'm about. Because when we win, we all win. There's no party like a Raider party, right? And that's the coolest thing about this whole bad boy, and that's what, that's what made our, our post games so entertaining and so exciting. Blank sheet, new chapter, we write our own script. With all the doubters, all the stuff they've been talking about, no matter. It's okay. We don't want to be like, we want to be respected. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be like, we want to be respected. And we've earned our respect. And that was just a way for us to celebrate and express ourselves. And that's what I grew up doing, expressing myself different ways, either on the field or, you know, as you was walking down the streets. Antonio Pierce was named the interim head coach. So I would say a lot has happened as the Raiders turn to a new page to move forward for the second half of the season. It's a handoff to the receiver. Myers are on the left side. 15-10. Block from Adams. Cuts inside. Touchdown, Raiders. Yeah. 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 Let's go, Zach Dillman. And down he goes. Let's go. In that first win against my former team, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Being a head coach. Wow, being the head coach and then beating your former team, that's crazy. And doing the way we did it was cool. So that that was, boom, got the monkey off her back. All right, boom, we can win, we can do this. All right, here we go. Step two. Led by Max Crosby for Sunday night football. We welcome you back here to Las Vegas. Now you got the world watching. What are these guys doing over there in Vegas now? Oh man, that was a fluke last week. They can't, they can't do that back to back. They can't have that same juice and energy. That style, they not gonna smoke cigars back to back. Yes, we will. The back it is caught. There for the touchdown. Trojan traffic is picked up by Robert Spillane. Energy's been incredible. You know, Coach Pierce just came in, was super honest and blunt, and uh, we bought into it. The lessons learned there, man. The good teams, man. You gotta be dialed in for 60 minutes. Play here or there, though. Can't turn the football over down the road, you know? You can't. You know what, AP? You got to be better. You got to be better in situation football. I don't know. Make some better decisions. Lesson learned for the head coach. We lived one. We felt slip away because we had him early in the game, and we, we didn't really just squeeze him. We didn't really put that, I call it killer instinct. Like, you can be up like we were, 14-0. Then you're going against teams that's been there and done it for a long time. That's won championships. They know how to play a full 60 minutes together as a team. We gotta be at our best at all times. We can't take nothing for granted. The Minnesota game tough, hard to swallow. You know, ball at the 11 yard line, ball at the 30 plus seven yard line twice, zero points at home after a bye. Didn't see it coming. You know, now now it's a gut check. Now it's a gut check. Now oh, the, the fairy tale's over. And it went back to really going back to our staff. Walked in that meeting Monday morning. 7 a.m., told him to come back in at 8. Reset yourself, flush your system. Whatever you gotta do, call your mama, daddy, go hug your babies, you know, give it the old lady, give it the wife. Reset, not talking about Minnesota anymore. How are we gonna beat these Chargers? Thursday night, quick turnaround. A lot of bodies not in this game. We'll get to all that throughout the next few minutes, but let's go. To the end zone, touchdown to my day. breaks the record. Amazing. <laughs> I thought they played so loose in such a short period of time, right? Four days later, zero to 63. That's a fast car right there, you know? That's the need for speed. We like that as Raiders. Then you gotta do it again, you know? You gotta keep continuing to be a good football team, and that, that's followed up with the Christmas Day. All right, all right. Uh, Raiders at Chiefs, Christmas Day. 
want it physicality. I want it ill intent. Balls on the ground, picked up by the Raiders. I want it violent. I want it to be scary. <laughs> We poured out everything, literally everything, into that Kansas City game. The thing about the NFL, you got to do it each and every week. And that's where we got to get better at. I call it winning stamina. We have to find it. We have to have that strain to do it each and every week. It's hard, man. But you got to find a way. You got to pull it from some other way. And uh, what I learned is that, you know, when you think you got it, you don't got it. And so the run ends. The Raiders are eliminated from the playoffs with a 23 to 20 loss to the Colts. So, you know, just that temperament of just winning stamina, having that focus, and then, you know, when it comes down to it, you got to still be at your best each and every week. And that's what it, what it takes to win this National Football League. It's game day, Sunday, January 7th. It'll be a 1.25 p.m. Pacific start here at Allegiant Stadium, home of the Super Bowl. So I went to Champ Kelly at the time, was the GM, and I said, are you okay with what I'm about to do? He said, what you about to do? I'll make sure everybody's in our team meeting like they normally are, and I'm asking them if they're in or not, and if they're out, to go ahead and walk out, and then we'll still give them their check, right? Because we're not firing them, they'll get their check. But if you're not in, I need you to stand up and leave. Because what I'm about to ask you to do, maybe everybody doesn't want to do. So I made the statement very clear to the team. I says, listen, we've got one game left. I get it, the U-Haul's packed. Wednesday, you got a trip to the Bahamas. Cool. But if you want to be here, I need all of you, 100% of you. I don't need like a little bit of you. I don't need one toe in, I need 10 toes down. Not players, not coaches, not just the strength staff, medical, anybody. Everybody that was in that room, I'm talking to you. Because I'm, I'm 10 toes down. I'm finishing what I started, what we started. What do we want to show Raider Nation? And they made up their mind, and that's what you saw. And the final play of the 2023 season is the victory formation. That was real, but that was dope. That's cool. Like, a coach? Nah, that don't happen. But I think that doesn't just speak for me. I think they're speaking for our team. I think they're speaking for our organization that they're seeing what they like. They understand what we're trying to build and where we're going and how we're going to do it, the way we're going to do it, how we're going to look doing it. And I think that it was more of an appreciation than anything else. It starts with our DNA. It's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be overnight. I'm not promising anything no, along with Tom, but I do know this, you're gonna get the best out of myself and Tom. We're gonna exhaust every possible resource, an ounce of sweat, tears, and effort, and night, and minute, and second that we have to turn this bad boy into a consistent winning organization that it's used to and it, it deserves. You can do whatever you want me to do. But at the day, I'm a winner, and I just wanna win. I want this organization to win. It's been a long time since we've won. And we need to do it consistently. That's what I want to do. I want to do it consistently. More important, yeah, we go to playoffs next year. Cool. What do we do next year? What do we do after that? No, I want to do it every year, man. You know, that's what I want this organization to get back to what it was in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Win it. Just win. Get you, give yourself a chance. Give us a chance in January to play for that Lombardi. That's not a promise. That's just, that's, that's what we're chasing. 